Let's talk about the toxic relationship between Iran and China's Huawei and give you the latest update on the Persian uprising against the Iranian regime. Well, hello, beautiful people. Welcome to today's episode of Maya's Life. Today's episode is going to be all about Iran and uh, uh, what the hell is going on over there, seriously. Uh, so there is, um, I'll give you the latest update on uh, the toxic relationship between China and Iran, because as you know, the axis of evil uh, in that region are Iran, China and Russia. They always work together against and they try to intervene in other countries. Uh, they cause chaos in the Middle East because that's what they do. Why not? Uh, because, and uh, there's the situation is that in Iran, there was an uprising that started uh, about a year ago. And uh, so we'll give you the latest update on that. But, at, but first, let's start with Huawei. So China have now arrested five former employees of Huawei uh, because they discussed uh, some secrets. Well, a private conversation about uh, the sales in Iran. As you know, uh, because of the, the US sanctions, uh, China aren't allowed to sell into Iran uh, any, any product that has links to uh, US goods. So the situation is that the five men were all locked in disputes with the uh, one-time employer, the Chinese uh, technology giant Huawei, and they had all joined a group on a social app uh, WeChat to organize uh, this whole thing. Uh, one of them wrote in the in the group that I can prove that Huawei sold to Iran, and the Chinese government were not happy because uh, this is supposed to be a secret, and they, they arrested them. Well, as we say, classic CCP. This is classic China uh, because you know, they don't want anything to get out uh, of the weird stuff that they do around the world, uh, and. Uh, they are one of the massive sponsors of Iran. And uh, they, they, at the same time, they have some issues when it comes to trade with Iran. At the same time, but uh, well, they, if they have to choose between uh, supporting uh, America or supporting Iran, they always support Iran. Now, in yesterday's uh, video, I was uh, on Oxford Street and I saw uh, the M&S, the actual department store, being open again. The actual clothing section as well. So I'm going to go to M&S to buy some clothes because it's... I think the last time I actually went shopping to buy some new clothes, Theresa May was still Prime Minister. So. <laughs> So here was me going in to buy some clothes and I came up with uh, some cheesecake and custard tarts and other desserts. <laughs> but anyway, let's go back to Iran because um, I, I think before we give, give you the, the update on what's going on there, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the situation there, um, well, about 40 years ago they had the revolution, before that they had uh, the monarchy and they had the, the Shah and uh, they replaced him with the, the, well, the Islamic Republic and the Ayatollah. So uh, that was a good move, guys. Uh, and since then, obviously, everything's been, they've lost all their freedoms, their liberties, uh, the economy has been terrible, human rights, gone. And uh, for every 10 years or so, there's always been a movement by the people um, to uh, overthrow the regime. And uh, they've always failed, primarily because um, uh, none of these movements, uh, so we had one in the late 80s that was done by the communists, uh, that didn't go well. And then you had the late 90s, which was uh, uh, started by the students, and it was based on the freedom of press and freedom of speech, didn't go well. Uh, then you had the late uh, 2000s, back in 2009, there was a rigged election, the presidential election, the green movement, didn't go well. And then now you have uh, 2020. Uh, so literally every 10 years there's a movement. The reason those movements failed was uh, primarily because there was no leader or a father figure. And the Iranian the culture, the Persian culture, it's uh, the reason that you know the, the first revolution 40 years ago went well, rightly or wrongly, was because they had a leader behind it. Uh, whereas uh, the recent movements didn't really have any. The other problem was that those movements uh, again, was uh, mainly done by the uh, young and educated and the middle class. Uh, the working classes were, until recently, still supportive of the regime. And that was the biggest problem. Now, what has changed recently is the, that over the last couple of years, economically, politically, and at every level, this regime has been so bad 
that even the ordinary working class people uh, and even the religious people are now against the government. So about a year, a year and a half ago, we started seeing some new protests and movement uh, across the country, not just the capital. And uh, for the first time, they have found, they seem to have found a leader and you'd be surprised to hear who that is. Yes, the current movement is mainly uh, being led by the Crown Prince, Reza Pahlavi, who is the son of the, the previous king, the last Shah. And uh, for about 40 years, he tried to stay away from uh, politics. He tried to not make any comments because there was no appetite for uh, monarchy in Iran uh, after what happened with his dad. Uh, even people who didn't like the current regime, the, the Islamic Republic, they still weren't ready to go back to monarchy. But there is now a massive movement uh, started by people in Iran asking for him to go back, uh, not to have the old system, but to have a, a, a new modern constitutional monarchy where he would be uh, essentially a father figure uh, and we will have a parliamentary democracy in Iran. Now, for those of you who are not familiar, this is uh, Reza Pahlavi, the crown prince and his family. And this is his mother, the last queen of Iran. Uh, she lives in Paris and he lives in uh, Washington DC at the moment. So this, uh, the, this rich culture of the, the Persian culture went from having these people in charge to having these people in charge. <laughs> Can you see a difference? Mm. So there's currently uh, a lot of people um, going around, uh, putting up stickers and signs across the country in Iran, uh, showing their support. Now, in terms of the latest updates and the, the protests and the, the whole movement, uh, they've kind of stopped because of the current health crisis. But uh, at the same time, because of the way the Iranian government have mishandled this whole situation, for example, the number of people who've lost their lives, uh, the, the numbers are absolutely inaccurate and lies. Uh, they're not really telling the truth. Uh, so uh, there is now a new appetite for the Iranian people to wait for this to finish and then come back out. So this is bad timing for the regime because there's a, there are reports coming out uh, talking about how uh, they are preparing for the exit strategy in case uh, the movement starts again because they know that the people are going to be so angry uh, that uh, they're not going to be that tolerant again. So um, they are preparing for the exit strategy. Uh, some of the Ayatollahs have places in Argentina, in Cuba, uh, in Russia. Uh, so th they are ready to get out. And uh, I, can, I can tell you that this is not going to last forever. I'll, I'll give the government, the regime, two years max. Uh, well, five years max, but I'm not going to make any predictions. But uh, it's, it's definitely not going to last. This is it. It's just a matter of timing. And uh, people are now completely ready because they've got nothing to lose at this point. The economy is down. They have no jobs. They have no money. They just want their freedom back and just want their uh, normal life back. Now, what I want to do on this channel is uh, uh, to actually focus on this as well as other issues uh, when we have uh, when there's more kind of development and uh, more updates. So I'll definitely keep you guys posted on that issue. Also, considering that we're not going to hear anything from our mainstream media in the West, uh, they don't talk about any of this. They don't really care. Uh, anyway, and they, they're just primarily focused on their own spinning and they're all fake news. For example, we had yesterday the Daily Mirror posting this. The Daily Mirror said that the Nightingale Hospital, one of the new ones, is still empty after construction work was finished. Okay, why is this bad news? This is lazy journalism. Uh, these new hospitals were built to help with NHS capacity. So the fact that they're empty is good news. Well, do you want them to have full of patients? It's, it's, these people are absolutely crazy. Um, it, it's got so bad that one of the Tory ministers, the actual government, uh, is now attacking the BBC for being biased. Yeah, the culture secretary is now uh, uh, slammed the BBC after the recent bias row. Uh, so uh, it will be interesting to see if uh, they would use this opportunity to actually uh, f uh, go ahead with the, uh, the BBC reform, because uh, there have been a lot of discussions that the government is uh, reviewing uh, the, the whole situation with the BBC funding and the structure and the bias. I mean, there are many people who are watching these main channels 
anymore. Anyway, uh, so we have the ITV's Good Morning Britain. Uh, their ratings went slightly um, high over the last uh, few years because of Piers Morgan. Uh, but Piers Morgan's uh, recently, uh, you know, gone crazy. Uh, so we have the latest uh, ratings from uh, ITV uh, comparing uh, their ratings to this channel. Yeah, so when you compare the ITV's Good Morning Britain's last month's rating, which was just over 700,000 views, uh, compared to this channel, which was 3.4 million views, no wonder no one cares about them anymore. I mean, maybe they should just hire me instead of Piers Morgan. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I really don't want that. It's, it's absolutely the worst job ever. But I do want to say massive thank you to all of you for supporting me and this channel so far. Uh, if you want to become a member, uh, and uh, get more in return, uh, then uh, check out the link in the description or just find the join button next to subscribe on the main channel uh, or just go on your browser and type in youtube.com slash myitc slash join and I'll see you guys tomorrow with a new video.